You hear what he said? Boyle's influence caused the owl to be dropped. He took the ethnic indigenous nature of the word away from it. And they really rewarded this man for that. Okay? He was also an alchemist. By Richard Morris' assertion. He was also an alchemist who spent years ardently seeking the philosopher's stone. The philosopher's stone is that thing that turns lead into gold. So he's telling you. Like, he was an alchemist, meaning he learned from people that called it alchemia or that called it alchemy. He learned from people that called it that and he pursued the work. But he cut it off. Listen to that. He was an alchemist, but he cut the owl off and turned it into a science. He pursued the great work himself. Nobody knows. He pursued the great work himself, but yet he's the face of legitimate chemistry. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm saying, Robert Boyle's now saying, chemistry is a science. It's a legitimate science. Take the owl off. That's for fairy tales. But he himself was an alchemist. You feel what I'm saying? In my opinion, if I may humbly give my opinion real quick, it seems to me that this guy's trying to hide his own origin of his own knowledge. You see? So, he remember, right now all we know about Robert Boyle is that he's the founder of modern chemistry. Okay. If this man was just a scientist, and if the chemical understanding of the universe was not the foundation of the entire Western civilization, and if they did not attempt to conceal these truths, then why did Robert Boyle remove the owl from a discipline that he himself practiced? And how do you explain the following facts mentioned by Richard Morris? A founding member of England's Royal Society, Boyle also allowed himself to be inducted at one point into what was supposedly a society of alchemical adepts. A founding member of England's Royal Society, it's just sciences. <laughs> just yeah, the alchemists. See, like now, scientists now, Bill Nye the science guy, whatever, we don't revere scientists. They're nobody. Now, when they give a report, they say scientists have revealed. They don't say the great scientists, da da da. Scientists are scientists. What? How does the elements have to do with England's royal society? See? It's a little more significant than we think. Fire, air, water, earth. A little more significant than we think. When Parliament passed, this is the next quote. When Parliament passed an act establishing a society for the propagation of the gospel among Native Americans of New England in 1649, Boyle accepted the position of governor of the society. Now he's the governor of a religious society established for propagation of the gospel among Native Americans? He's just a scientist. Wow. Not only is he a, uh, he's a founding member of the Royal Society, but now he's the governor of the propagation of gospel in the new land. That's big. That's pretty big. That's big, man. Um, he took the post quite seriously. And remember, he was an alchemist seeking a philosopher's stone. Now he's preaching the gospel? Ain't they? Ask, ask anybody who go to church if they want to be a sorcerer. Ask anybody who go to church if they want to find the elixir of life or the philosopher's stone or turn lead into gold. They're going to look like crazy. But this guy was, he was in a society of alchemical adepts. But now he's in charge of preaching the gospel of Christianity? If it's not made up, how does that connect? If he wasn't a guy who was just making some stuff up to control people, how does that connect? You know? Anyway, um, he left large sums to Harvard and William and Mary College. 
large sums. He obviously got paid just because he was smart, just because he was a scientist. He got paid, okay? And he left a lot of money to Harvard and William and Mary College. In his will, and he expressed that it was to spread the Christian faith in the new world. This serious, serious alchemist, this founder of modern chemistry, this founder of England's Royal Society, this uh, person who belonged to a secret society of alchemists, left in his will all of his money to spread the Christian faith. Tell me it don't connect. In late 1655 or early 1656, Boyle moved to Oxford, where he, that's London, where he could enjoy the company of other natural philosophers. They done deduced it all the way back to natural philosophy. How come he gone now? Alchemy only lasted, what, two paragraphs? <laughs> okay, in 1645, a number of people interested in the new experimental philosophy, the new experimental philosophy, <laughs> had formed a group called the Invisible College, which meant weekly in London. By 1655, some of the members of the Invisible College had become affiliated with Oxford University. Y'all know Oxford University is big. If y'all don't know how big Oxford is, just Google it. Huge. It is, it is Western literature. It is Western education. Okay? Uh, he moved to Oxford. Let's see, where were we? Okay, some of the members of the Invisible College have become affiliated with Oxford University and the weekly meetings resume. On one of his visits to London, Boyle met Dr. John Wilkins, under whose leadership the Invisible College had originally been created. Wilkins, who had become warden of Wadham College, urged Boyle to move to Oxford, where he could participate in the group's activities. Beginning in 1660, he wrote a series of books on different aspects of natural philosophy. Yo. He just went and founded a society to spread Christian faith in the new world. Now he's writing books on natural philosophy. And contributed to the philosophical transitions of the Royal Society. Contributed to the philosophical transit. Listen to that. Contributed to the philosophical transitions of the Royal Society. The philosophical transitions. The Royal Society is changing their philosophy. This is a guy who goes from alchemy to Christianity like that. And he's helping the Royal Society change their philosophy. He's also spreading the Christian faith in 